right. Uh, hello, YouTube. Uh, good to see you again. We are on week six of the Beginner Boost. Um, if you have... Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Mr. Head Tennis is just gifted. Gow, how many? Gosh, I'm like something like 10 tier one subs. Oh, my goodness. A total sub bomb. <laughs> Thank you so much, Head Tannis. Uh, he has been uh, H-E-T underscore T-A-N-I-S. One of the most prominent, uh, capable streamers in all of the science and tech and software category. Regularly streams about uh, DevOps and infrastructure topics that I can't even touch. So very, very happy to have Head Tannis with us today. Uh, I mean, I appreciate that, Head Tannis. Thank you very much. Um, so week six, what are we talking about on week six? So first thing I want to show you in my ever, uh, you know, in my efforts to make it easier for you. So if you go to skillsec.io slash boost slash 2023, you can just click through if you want. Um, I have made a number of substantial inputs, uh, changes to the, to the overview and in an attempt to get an estimate of how long it's going to take for us to finish the boost this year, as well as to kind of capture things to make sure I don't forget. It's obviously not exhaustive, but it's better than than before. Um, there are when I was when I was going through this, uh, I did uncover a, a few things that I think we've covered out of order. Um, so we will have a review here at the end, and we'll go down through everything, and we'll say, "Hey, remember when we did this? And remember when we did this?" And and of course, this is going to serve as the uh, basis for the 2024 boost. So we'll have a even a a better. Uh, organization of the topics the, the most challenging part of this and i for, since 2013 when i started the most challenging part of this is getting the order right because there are so many chicken and the egg scenarios where you have to learn one thing in order to learn the other thing but you don't know what thing to learn first very frequently you have to learn some of one thing and then learn another thing and then go back and learn the rest of the first thing in order to keep moving such as file text editing and things like that so that's why this is so hard. This is probably why it doesn't exist, right? I, I went through and reviewed the Learning the Linux Command Line book, which I actually also wanted to mention. Uh, Learning the Linux Command Line uh, is probably my favorite book on this topic. It's free. Don't buy it. Um, this I bought two copies of this before I knew it was free. Uh, it's a very dated book. It was done in the 90s, but thankfully Linux and Unix don't change very much. Uh, if you want to contribute to William Schatz, William Schatz is an amazing human being, also an amazing author, got a great style and everything. Uh, but to tell you the truth, this is pretty damn dated. And uh, it, but it, you know, it does give kind of a nice overview, it does go into, um, you know, shell scripting and, and what the, if you want a different uh, approach to it, you can go in here and check it out. Um, I mean, there is a number of, of internet resources. I'm starting to make a collection of what those things are, but and at some point, my skillstack.io document will have the fleshed out examples like this as, a, as opposed to just a video. So, so that, and it'll all be free, of course. So this is another resource I wanted to mention. Uh, I just want you to know that I did go through it again completely on my own time and uh, determined that, yes, we very much still need another resource in addition to this. Um, but I just wanted to let you know about that. I had not mentioned that earlier. So we'll go back to the boost overview. And in fact, some of the stuff we're going to talk about today is not covered in that book, nor is it covered anywhere on the internet. And, and, and I'm, I have to look it up every time. So, so let's get into it. We are right about, we did navigating the Linux file system and understand the general organization. Uh, we there, I think on week two, we went through, you know, what slash var is for and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think you have to have a deep knowledge of what the different directories are for other than slash home, right? Which is where your stuff lives. Uh, if you're an absolute beginner who just wants to use the Linux command line, right? If you have any inkling at all to become a system and then yes, you need to do all those things, but not right now. Capture, append, co uh, connect, command, input, output, and errors. We went through that. Uh, run commands on multiple files using wildcard globbing. Went through that. Uh, search and filter text input with regular expressions. Okay, so now we're into what we're going to cover today. And these are, you know, overarching. This is a two-hour estimate. I don't know. It probably might be less than that. Edit text files in place with command line. We might get to that today. Maybe not. 
the edit text files visually with editors, terminal editor apps, specifically Vim, NeoVim, and Nano, all of those, Joe, Pico. Uh, that's going to have its own day. That's not going to be today. But uh, based on these numbers, I was able to derive that we're going to be at two hours a week. We're going to be going into December. It's going to take about 32 weeks to finish based on these number estimates over here. And if, I actually, there's a video of me making a script. I wrote a shell script to filter this file and and take off the stuff on the ends. If you want to see an example of, of why, why the command line is awesome, let me show you. <laughs> I, I can't resist. I'm going to make my times, I promise. This is why the command line is so awesome, right? So, so I'm just getting, uh, just, just, you know, be generous. Give me like two minutes to tell you this, okay? So I'm like writing this thing. I was like, hmm, I'm putting my little estimates there. And I'm like, wow, there's like a good, this is actually a good lead into today's topic. It's like, God, I got all these things. I got one per line. And the, la the last item of the line has parentheses around it. And as long as I follow, follow a one hour or a 20 minute thing, that looks pretty consistent. You know what? I could actually run a program that tells me how many weeks this is going to take. 31 weeks. How did it possibly calculate that? Not only that, I can write another. This is the power of the command line, people. This is the power of the command line. I have to show you this. Okay. So you do last week. Boom. Now it tells me the exact day that we're going to end because of the power of the command line. And now I know you want to look, right? So we're going to look in there. Uh, I'll just use, I'll use VI because we want syntax highlighting. We're going to learn VI next week or so. So, so here's this week's is a program that I just wrote in like 30 minutes using bash uh, to, to do the calculations. Yeah. And right now that looks like absolute chicken stretch. You're like, what the hell is that? Right. Don't never fear. You will understand every single character in this file by December. Okay. We're going to go through bash and learn touch. You're going to learn how to program in bash. And then if, if you can program in bash, you can program in anything because it is a little bit like chicken stretch. I won't lie. And, and we'll talk about why it looks kind of not pretty. If you program in Python, you're like, oh my God, what is this? Yeah, well, this has been around something like 20 years before JavaScript and Python were even, you know, conceived. This down here is something called a reverse notation calculator using DC. We're going to learn about that. That is the proper way to do math in Unix and Linux. Do you know how many people do it wrong? And it's also the, one of the main reasons that, 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 that Z shell is broken. We're going to get all into that. So what this program does is it takes that last, this is a, this is an intro because this is, this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to, this is a regular expression right here, right? This is a regular expression line. I'm just going to give you a brief summary. So this says, read every line of input from the file. Okay. We talked about standard input last time. We're not going to talk about it again. Uh, it says, if the line, this is, this contains the line, that one line, right? Does not right? Not, uh, have in it, that's what this is, uh, an M or an H followed by a, a left parenthesis at the end of the line. That's what the dollar is. Then continue. So that's what causes it. That line kills it to skip. This is called inline logic. Uh, this is an inline app. We're going to get through all of this. I promise. We're not going to do the, the scripting part, but the regex part we're going to do. So, so line here, and then this is called a parameter. This is called parameter expansion. And we're not going to get to this until we do get bash coding. But what this does is it says, okay, chop everything up to greedily, uh, greedily that we got two of these, right? Greedily chop every single thing off uh, up to and including the parenthesis, right? The left parenthesis. And then this says, can, you know, I'll take that same line we just modified and then do the same thing, but let's chop off the last, uh, let's chop off the last uh, parenthesis. Now this would, would not work if I had a space after that, but I made sure not to, right? I could have fixed that, but whatever. And then down here we say, okay, now does that line have an M in it? Because now the only thing left, by the way, is what? 12, or one H or 20 M, right? That's the only thing left in line. And so we go to this line and we say, does it have an M in it? Okay, if it's an M, then it's minutes. Okay, so let's let's calculate the minutes by grabbing the number without the M on the end, all right? And we'll add to the number of minutes. If it says hours in it, let's add to the number, the total number of minutes. The, like the clear dash I says, here we have an integer, right? 
So in integer minutes, you can only do integer math in, in shell. That's why you have to use DC or BC if you want non-integer math. That's the spoiler. So minutes plus equals line H. This is if it's, a, if it's got an H, it's, it's, it's 60 minutes, right? Because it's got an H, it's an hour. So then it says, okay, we're going to add 60 of them. So that adds, so these, 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 double, these double parentheses are what's telling us to do the math stuff right that's bash math but again only integer math i don't care what somebody tells you you cannot do anything but integer math in any shell safely all right so you come down here and then you say okay we're all done now and so so we've gone through we've looped through all our stuff we are this is you know what this is now because that says hey feed in the readme file and then and then it prints it all out for us right so it does a printf and then it does this nice pretty floating point cleanup the two spaces right and uh and here it says calculate to two significant digits decimal places uh that's what that is the number of minutes uh times divided by 60 so the number of minutes 60 divide this is reverse notation right and and divide 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 that and then just put a two into the stack and divide that by two and then, I don't know, what am I doing? I do? Oh, right, right, because it's the number of weeks because it's two hours per week, okay? And then print it, right? And then it prints out that total number, right? So that gives us the number, which, which works out nice and evenly in this particular case to uh, 231 or something. All right, so that, that, that has been a really quick overview of, of what is going on in here. And you can uh, eventually go ahead and figure that out so so that that is that is so so that's the power of that right and then i just wrote another little program uh, uh to show you what you can do with it so this is the unix way and we're going to talk more in detail about this but the unix way is to write one thing that does things really well that integrates with everything else right preferably like by using it as a pipe or a filter so here we we say okay give me all of the weeks uh, I'm going to count up all the weak files, and I'm going to look at their last lines. And oh no, this is just uh, telling us how many weak files we have. And then it, this gives that week. It basically this is estimating the total number of weeks based on the number of weak files, but it's also deleting any of the weak files that are already there, assuming that means that we've already covered that week. So by doing that, and then it it can calculate. It can use the date command which has this really great syntax as kind of natural language, this Saturday plus n number of weeks minus the current number of weeks. So we calculate the current number of weeks based on all the number of week files in this directory. And uh, otherwise we calculate the total number of weeks uh, as running the weeks command, which I just showed you. So that gives me 32 weeks, which was rounded up. And so now we can take that number and we can subtract the number of current weeks and we get the exact date that we're gonna end the beginner boost. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, so let's learn how to do it. Let's do it. Um, this is all Bash, of course. Uh, and uh, somebody's asking what language that is. Um, we're doing the beginner boost right now. So what are we going to learn today? And where are we? So let's go back to uh, to week six. I have tried my hardest. I never get this right. Every I always have it slightly wrong. Uh, usually I over anticipate how much I can cover. But this is what we're going to cover to this week. Uh, and I just introduced a lot of it, okay? So particularly regular expressions, which are about midway down in our topic here, okay? Uh, this stuff is all going to be in the show notes. It's also going to be on skillsec.io. So please go there and follow that and star the repo if you want. Make sure you have a GitHub repo to take notes. Oh, take a moment to open up your GitHub repo right now so you can start taking notes. Uh, so you have your own, you know, thing going on. We're still using, I'm still suggesting that you use graphics Look, I don't care how you take notes. That's up to you. But on the first day, we talked about taking notes using Markdown uh, in GitHub so that you have a copy of them you can go to anywhere. Uh, that's about all I have to say about that. So for now, we still don't know how to edit files from the command line using an editor. But so for now, use a graphics tool of some kind and and just go in. You can actually use the editor from GitHub to do that. Well, then go back and watch week one or zero for that. Uh, we're going to learn how to filter text from the lines of file. Uh, how to sort the lines of output, how to determine which ones are unique, how do I limit output. Just a reminder, we're doing everything in recipe format. 
so that if you when you search through this document you'll using make docs or whatever you'll find uh your hits you'll find the answers will be more relevant hopefully in the youtube video description as well so let's do the first one how do i search within a file from the command line now we already saw a kind of complicated version of this right so we saw here um we saw i mean in my weeks program this is a complicated way to do that so there there are basically three approaches to this to searching through a file right and i mean there's at least three <laughs> there's actually many more probably but let me let's go ahead and write them down so the first one, let's see, whoops, one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, the first one is the most obvious and people almost everywhere universally will know this. Uh, it's called grep. Okay. That will search through something. Another way to search through a file is with awk. These are just, this is the names. Uh, but you can actually search through a file just with plain old bash. And that's what I did using a bash, uh, a bash, uh, a bash while loop. Okay. You can use a bash while loop uh, to read through each line. And the way that you search through a file really is really, you know, important depending on what it is you're doing, how, what you need to do, how precisely you need to dissect that line apart. Right. And, and so this, that's, that's one of the things that, uh, that we're, we're doing here. So we're going to look at, at these main ways that there, as I said, there's many, many, many ways to search through a file. Uh, but, um, you know, so, so this is the way now you, you might be wondering why said's not here. Uh, there's another command called said that we'll get into later that I don't want to cover said until after we've covered ed. If we've covered ed first said is an, is an extension of ed said is an extension of ed. So, so if you know those things already and you're watching this, and you're like, Oh my God, why didn't you say said that's why. Okay. And by the way, the set is primarily for transforming. I want you to notice this focusing on text file filtering another fancy way to say searching transformation. So that's when you take a line and you change it into something else before it gets printed out, whether or not it hits a file or not, it gets sent through pipeline to something else. Right? So before we get into the trans, you know, transformation of the line, we first need to understand how to deal with the lines, how to filter them, how to find what we want in those lines. Okay. And there's a lot of file examples to do here. So if you don't have, just let me give you a heads up. If you are watching us for the first time, um, the way, please go click on, if you want to get with us right away and you don't want to waste time, go do the quick start. This will get you your Podman. Uh, this will get you your Podman skill stack container in one command once you have Podman installed. Okay. Go do that now if you haven't done that. If you want to follow along, if you want to pause the video and practice these commands yourself, go do that and that'll get you Linux right away and you can start playing around with it. Local Linux without necessarily having uh, stuff like that. Uh, no, it's not It's not at all like SQL. We're not, SQL is not related. SQL is standard query language. That's a different thing. Uh, we're talking about the shell here. So uh, while loops in general are, I mean, a while loop in general is just a while loop, you know, no matter where you are. When we talk about coding, which we're going to do in several weeks, uh, we'll get more into that. But I, I want to introduce a little bit here. Okay, so let's start with the grep. So the first one is grep, right? So let's actually do this with something that matters. There's, there's a lot of ways that we could do this. We could take any file uh, that we wanted to. Um, if we could even take our this, uh, this readme file, right? So this readme file, let's actually do this, right? So how would I find all of the lines? This is this, there's lots of stuff here, right? Now, but first of all, as a reminder to you, how do you just demonstrate, how do you just list what's in a file? You should already know this, it's a review. How do you put everything that's in a file? How do you see what's in a file? You don't know VI yet. How do you see what's in a file? All right, if you answered using a pager, that's one way, right? We already did this, it's a review. So you could use cat, right? If you do cat though, you have a problem though, because what happens? It all goes off the screen and you have to use your thing, cat. Okay, so cat does that, but cat's not enough, right? So how do you look at everything in a file without it going off the screen? And you want to look at it one wink, wink page at a time. Yeah, use a pager, right? Now you could page up if you do this, but but if you do this, see, my, see how my mouse doesn't work? Yeah, you don't always gonna have mouse support. So so you should usually get used to using a pager. We already covered this. So instead of using that, I could do this. Less readme, 
oh, look at that. Now I get it one page at a time, right? Push the space bar, go down. And if I want to search, uh, by the way, you can go, I think, what is this? Is it shift? I don't know. How do, how do I go up in less? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, you can use less for that or you can use more. Uh, I do the same thing. My, my, my more, this is actually more, as you can see, my, my more, my more is less because it's a, it's a, it's an alias, right? It's because I type more all the time. There's two different pages. More is older. Uh, but if you want it, so, and I don't know if you just see that, but if I wanted to use the actual more instead of my alias, I put a slash in front of it. That's a bonus. And, and that's actually more. This is what more looks like. All right. There's not as much color and fun stuff in there. So those are pages. We already did that. Uh, yeah, man uses a pager. So, and we've talked about navigating in pagers and searching through a pager. And that's actually one of the things you could do, right? So, so let's do that. Let's, let's say that we wanted to, let's use less. Okay. So less read me. And we want to search for all of the occurrences of the word Linux. So we push slash Linux, right? And it kind of shows us where all the lines are that say Linux. Okay. There's one. Here's another one. Here's another one. It highlights them. It's one of the reasons we use less instead of more because there's color. You don't get that with uh, more by default. So here it's kind of helping us out by finding all these things to the end of the line. And uh, if you want to go to the next instance, you just push N to go to the next one. N, N, N. This is all documented in the man page, which you know about, right, for, for less. Uh, and, you know, you'll find these different things. If I, if I wanted to go back uh, by to the top, by the way, uh, it's the letter P. So we're going to go to the next one, next, 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 and then, and then, and then, I think it's capital N to go to the previous one. Yep. The, if you want to go capital N, it goes to the previous one. Um, and so we're going through, but the, I'm showing you this because, you know, this is kind of clunky, right? It's like, yeah, I mean, that, that works and all, but how do I actually get all those lines? I want to put all of those lines in a file, right? I just want those lines that have Linux in the name to go on we, we talked about head and tail as well yeah so we, we 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 just want those linux lines in a file so how do we do that right well that's where today comes in so there's a command the command is called grep uh this is this is one of the most well-known and loved commands in all of unix dumb uh it's been around forever people make jokes about it um you can actually watch the creator of grep talk about where grep came from uh, and there's a really great YouTube video about the origins of grep, uh, which, which date back to the origins of Unix actually at Bell Labs. If you really want to get into it, you can, you can study it. People, I mean, grep, grep is so popular. You know, you'll see, you'll see grep show up on shirts and people will use it in regular conversation as opposed to, uh, you know, to, to other, to, you know, to, to other day. Just, it's just, it's just a really cool thing to know. Okay. So grep searches for patterns in each file. And I love how it calls it a pattern. Uh, the type of pattern that it looks for depends on what kind of pattern matching you want. And we're going to get into what those patterns are. We've already kind of talked about one of them, which is wildcard globbing, which is a pattern technically, but it, it's not the kind of pattern that we're going to def necessarily use for searching within files. Uh, and we're going to get into all of that. And, and that is a huge topic because pattern matching is probably the single most powerful advantage of using command line interactions with text files, period. I mean, that, that is by far, uh, the, the, the most important thing that you'll ever do from a command line. You might move things, you might run things, but the power comes from transforming those lines and finding lines and finding, you know, and doing all that kind of thing. Uh, and so, so that's, that's where we're at. Welcome graders. Uh, okay. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking fast. I'm trying to get this into two hours. All right. So Greb searches for patterns in each file. Patterns is one of the most patterns separated by new line characters. What's a new line, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, Stop now, stop the video now and go back and watch the day. I don't remember where it is and watch the day where we talk about the origins of the terminal and how the terminal is actually a big, fancy teletype machine. OK, and the reason that's irrelevant right now is because when it says a new line character, there is actually a new line invisible code that gets sent to the terminal at the end of every line. 
There's also another character called a carriage return. And if you think about it in terms of a teletype, teletype, a lot of teletype machines, they would just go forward one and then they would go down and they would write backwards, right? So, so what we end up having, and we get, when we get to coding, we, we're going to run into these a lot. We run into the the uh, the carriage return and the new line characters. And uh, fun fact, Windows, uh, since the dawn of time, has put a carriage return and a new line at the end of every line. Uh, I believe Apple, up until something like 10 years ago, always put only a carriage return at the end. And Unix has always only put a line return at the end. And all of them have, all of them are come from teletype, right? They all come from teletype, and every all three operating systems for a long time. You, if you open a file that was, this is the reason that when you open a file that's been created on a Windows machine, you see all these, uh, you know, carriage M's, these like empty, ugly characters at the end of the line. That's why. In fact, we used to have to convert the files between different things. Now, thank God. You know, most of the operating systems have come to their senses and they we all agree that a single line return at the end of, of a line, a single invisible line return escape character indicates the end of the line. Now, this is going to it's super important that I talk about this, OK, because that's how you determine what the end of a line is. Right. And in fact, it's so important that I'm going to write it in my in my documentation here because I want you to spend time remembering. I'm going to put a little question on this uh, for you. Just give me one second to update this. Actually, I'm going to pause the video while I do this. We'll be right back in just one second. Unpause. Okay, so here we are. What is the difference between a carriage return and line return? Make sure you understand that and that you understand what we, we just talked about with regard to the different operating systems. Okay. Um, and But th that's whenever you see the new line character, that's what we're talking about. Uh, just so you know, a new line character is represented as a backslash N, which... Um, and a carriage return is a backslash R. And uh, I mean, there's other, there's a lot of other escape sequences that come from teletype that we'll get into. In fact, when we start doing color, color uses the, uh, this, you know, invisible, you know, control care, escape character concept from the teletype uh, to piggyback uh, and provide color. Right. Because that's how you would tell if the teletype was doing color. That's how you would tell it to do a color change. And it would be in line and it would change the state, uh, the finite state machine of the teletype saying, hey, you're printing blue now until it got changed. And it's, it's just super important when you're working with the terminal that you think in terms of that teletype. You're going to be running into these concepts of new line and, care, and line return all the time. And the reason I'm harping on it so much is as a systems operator, as, as a platform engineer, as a systems engineer, as a hacker, you inevitably are going to be burned by what's at the end of the line. Let me give you an example of this. When you are dealing with Internet web pages... Okay, it uses a protocol called HTTP, probably sounds familiar. And that the definition, according to the RFC by the IETF of the, of the HTTP specification for a request is that the content of the body and the MIME type headers are terminated with a carriage return and a line return. That means that if you are debugging, you know, you're underneath either because you're hacking it or because you want to debug your, your REST API or something like that, you are going to see these these carriage return and line returns come out. Like if you were to take, if you were to redirect the output from a web server and stick it in a file so you could study the MIME type headers, which is kind of fun, instead of using your, you know, your Chrome things, your Chrome, you know, developer tools, which is what most people do today. But if you wanted to do it from the command line and just dump that out to a file, you'd open up that file in your editor and you would see these extra carriage returns in there. Why? Because the specification for communication over the internet from web requests requires a carriage return and a line feed. Do they all put it every time? Nope. <laughs> and that's actually kind of an issue, but that's why you're going to care. So whether you're a hacker or just somebody who wants a file to, to work, uh, you want that to be there. And we're going to talk about how to show that when we get into visual text terminal editing. We're going to see why it's so important that you know certain commands to sh make those invisible characters visible. Right. And it's another reason to use a terminal, by the way. If you're doing any of this on VS Code, God help you, because it's not going to show you the differences. I can't wait to get to, to Ed and VI and show you how 
valuable using a terminal editor. It's, Why the hell should I use a terminal editor? We got VS Code today. Because this kind of stuff doesn't show up in modern editors like electron-based editors like VS Code. So I'm building a case. Carriage return. So we're back to grep. Grep prints each line that matches a pattern. Typically, the pattern should be quoted when grep is used in a shell command. And, and typically, any argument, anything you pass into a command should be quoted so that... Uh, you know, expansion, we'll say, there's lots of it, uh, doesn't mess up your day and put stuff in there that shouldn't be in there uh, or, you know, get you hacked or something. A file of dash stands for standard input. Now, that's assumed. So if you if you see how it has a file here, you can put a dash, and if you put a dash, it'll read dash. Dash as a file name traditionally means read from standard input. We already talked about that another week. I'm not going to talk about it right now. <clears throat> if no file is given, a recursive search exam as a working directory I didn't know that. I did not know that. I've never done that. That seems interesting. So that it'll it'll actually search the working directory and non. -rec I wonder if that works in POSIX too. I don't know. Anybody know? Uh, so no recursive search is a read standard input. In addition, the variant uh, the variant programs egrep, fgrep, rgrep are the same as grep dash egrep dash f grep dash r. Uh, you don't need this. And we're going to get into POSIX a little bit here and. And we kind of have to. In fact, I'm going to put that in the thing. Uh, what's uh, POSIX and why do I care? We got it. We're going to have to cover that. Uh, we just we just have to. We can't we can't abandon POSIX. Yeah, we 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 have to have that. Okay. So anyway, uh, egrep. So let's get let's get grepping, shall we? Uh, these variants are deprecated but are provided for backward compatibility. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, okay. Uh, la, 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 ba, ba, yeah, so bottom line, don't use egrep, fgrep, and rgrep, or PCR egrep, which I love. Uh, and I'll tell you what all that means now. So you can look up the help on this. There's lots of things here. So these other options we're going to use, and let's just actually practice grep. So get your terminal up right now if you have it. Um, if you, if you're on your own system, so if you're on a boost machine, which I will do, I'll, you know what, I'm going to start up a boost machine right now so I can be exactly like you. Okay. Uh, in fact, I think I have one already up. Oh, nope, I don't. Okay. By the way, if you're on windows terminal preview and you want to open up a new git bash thing, uh, it's control shift and then, uh, the number of the type of shell. So I'm going to push number three and that's going to open up a new shell. This is a git bash shell. And you can also do that from just going to your tabs and looking at that little, t you know, arrow next to the tab and do that. So what am I doing here? I'm going to start up a new container, Podman, just to remind you, start dash a boost. Now you should already have boost or skill stack, whatever you started your term, your, you should already have one of these, right? So you can just go in there and do what I did. Now we're running as a user here on skill stack on our, this is the, this is the, you know, the beginner boost uh, container that we made. And we kind of talked about one of the files here uh, in the process, but it, we're gonna. This is actually a good file to practice using this with. So let's look for a file called Etsy password, right? And before you get worried, you know what is in this file, right? Okay, Etsy Etsy password. Let's go look at it. It's got lots of stuff in here, right? But this is a really good file uh, to play around with using these methods, right? Um, by the way, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. So that's our default user, right? So let's say that we, we don't really want everybody in that file, right? So here comes grep to the rescue. Uh, there's no passwords in here, by the way, those are in Etsy shadow. You want to see, do you want me to dump my Etsy shadow for the whole world to see? Yeah, no, we can't see it because I'm not root. Anybody know how to get root? Yeah, so the shadow is where the password actually goes. And by the way, that's not the password. That's just the hash that you could use to brute force a password attack if you're a hacker. Uh, but you'll know that. So anyway, what we really want here, so this file does contain uh, the username, the user ID. This is really important. There are commands to do these things that we're going to do. But let's say we're going to make our own version of of, of, of UID for my, for my user. Um, uh, sorry, ID. There we go. So ID U, is it dash U? Is it U? ID, uh, I think it's dash you. Yeah, so so this is the user ID, and this is great. So there are commands already for this, but let's say we're going to write our own, right? 
Um, I mean, so we wanted to see, we want to see what the, the ID or, or the name, or how about this, what the default, you know, this big old text string is right here, right? So, which is, does not have a command as far as I know. So let's say we want to get that. So what do we have to do? The first thing we need to do is we need to grep out user from the file Etsy password. All right. So, so there is our keyword. And in the simplest form, that's what we do. We just put a keyword in it and Matt gives us all the lines and nine times out of 10, that's enough. You don't have to do anything more than that. Um, uh, so, so there we go. We see that. And now we have, we have a, we have kind of a problem though, don't we? Because we just want to get this part of it right here. Well, that's going to be the next part that we're going to cover. So the, the first part of this is Actually, let's let's do something trickier. Let's let's find everything that's got um, system in it. How about that? Let's try something like that. So there's lots of stuff that has system in it, right? Like, damn. Okay, we got lots of things that have system in it. Hmm. And you know, huh? That's not going to work very well, right? Um. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to this. Let's let's practice first of all. So let's. Let's use, let's make a file the way we know how to make a file, all right? So let's echo uh, a bunch of data. Uh, actually, no, let's use printf. You don't know the printf, so we'll learn a different one. So let's use printf, and we're going to use that carriage return I told you about, okay? And let's let's put a whole bunch of data here. Let's put um, uh, a, uh, and then a carriage, a line return, b, um, how about another line return, c, uh, another line return D, uh, another line return uh, E, and then we're going to put an A at the end. Okay, we'll put an A at the end as well. So we're going to, and we need a line return. All right. So then, then what? We're going to print F, and this. Remember, I told you backslash N is a line return, right? So we're going to put all that, and we're going to redirect that into a file called foo. Okay, and so now we have a file called foo. And we can look at the content of the file foo. I'm not using it or on purpose here. So so now, uh-oh, it didn't quite work, did it? Because I screwed up. What did I do wrong? <laughs> you want to know somebody? Oh, watch this. Can I show you something? I put escape characters in there on accident. Look at that. I did. See that? But because I use VI, that's a spoiler. But because I use VI, I can see that I screwed up. All right. So let's go back and do my command again. I like it when I make mistakes. Like the backslash E. That's an escape. I actually put an escape in there because I put the backslash in the wrong place. Yeah, I was like, we don't need it. I don't need that. It should have been backslash N E, right? And backslash A, what the hell is that? That's not a thing. <laughs> so Rob, what are you doing? Okay, so now let's try that one. Cat foo. All right, so now we have our things. And just to make sure, I'm gonna go look. Yeah, see, we don't have any control sequences in there that we can see. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. I, I, sometimes those mistakes work out nicely. Uh, so cat foo. So we have all these letters, right? Now, how do I get just the A's? You already know this, right? Grep A temp uh, foo. All right, I got the A's, right? Can we make this interesting, though? Can we make this interesting? Hmm. What if we say... Let's do this. Let's go back to our up, up arrows, up arrows, right? Let's have let's have a, and then at the bottom let's have uh, let's have uh, a x. Ooh, how about that, right? And then let's also have just another a in there, right? Okay, now what? Now it's like really hard. We got x, we got a and a. So if I grab a out of that, I'm gonna get all of it, right? And that's not what I want. I mean, I can get the X one just fine, right? I can get that one just fine. But how do I get just the A's? Right? So I'm doing this on purpose because I want you to see that there are patterns that you have to pass to grep and other tools in order to isolate text matching and how important they are. And this is whether it be a common username or, a, you know, things like that. I showed you my example uh uh, I showed you my other example in my weeks file where we use a regular expression to match an M and H at the end, which let's look into that now. All right. So, so the next thing to learn is how to provide some sort of pattern. Uh, everything that contains a by default. Yeah, no, it grabs them all. So we, we do grab a right. 
foo. And so what it does is it grabs every line that contains an A in it anywhere. If I want to make it so that it's the end of the line, and by the way, we broke one of the rules that it told us. Remember, it told us to put it in quotes. Well, we didn't really need the quotes. And by the way, you should always default to single quotes unless you need double quotes. That's not common. Most people don't do that, but it's also easier to type. So, so that's the same exact thing, right? The reason we're doing that is because we're now going to use a character that has a very special meaning to the command line, and we don't want that character bare on the command line because it won't do what we want. So we're going to use a, a dollar, and the dollars means end of line. Okay? So, and this is the very first regular expression uh, pattern matching syntax you've ever learned. Okay. And we're going to take a, we're going to pause and we're going to talk about regular expressions in a bit here. We are now at 1150. Um, and, uh, so I am going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about regular expressions, but I want you, I want to show you one more thing that you can play with during the break. So the other one is I want to find anything that begins with a right. So let's actually add something more to our, I'm going up in my history here. Let's add some, some other, we have X and we have a, let's add, let's add another, uh, another line here and we'll put, um, X, a, how about that? We'll put X, a, and why not? Why don't we do X, a, X even X, a, a, X. That's getting kind of weird, but you see my point. Right, so so now we're gonna make that file. So it's got all that stuff in there, and now it's got x and x and x and x. So so here's here's your second regular expression thing you've ever learned. Find me all the lines that en that end in a, right? Find me all the lines that begin with a, right? Or find me all the lines that begin and end with a. See that? Have fun with that. I'm going to take a quick little break. All right, so we're back from the break, and I just added a couple things here. What is the difference between echo and printf? Make sure you know the difference between those two. In a nutshell, echo just is used for simply echoing things, printing them to the command, to, this, to the command line, to the output, standard output, uh, which automatically adds a line return. Uh, you can manipulate what echo does by changing the arguments, adding those little dash things, you know. Uh, printf, on the other hand, uh, by default, does not print a line return, okay? And it's actually more like what it comes, the name comes from C and stuff. Uh, it doesn't behave like C printf. That's important if you know that. Um, but, and it also allows you to format the output, uh, including adding a carriage return or a line return if you want. I mean, I, the reverse of that, the line return or a carriage return anywhere. So that's where we have the backslash end, right? So if you want a line return, and actually if you experiment with this, you'll see. So if you do printf, if you printf something, you'll see that it doesn't print a line return, right? And if you do echo something, it does, okay? And for this reason, in scripts, you'll often see a lot of echoes, one on a line, and it's, it's kind of old school to do that, but whereas you could have done the whole thing with one printf and line returns in there. Um, but if you want a line return printf, you need a line return. So I forgot to cover that, but let's go ahead and, and cover that now. Um, the other thing with printf is is positional. It'll actually substitute things in, which which I'll just show you. But but uh, you know you, we're not going to do that today. Okay, so that's actually one of the more powerful parts of printf. Uh, something that's actually particularly interesting is that it will, this is unlike C, it will actually print one, it will do a printf for every argument you send it. Uh, so so you can actually use that to, to do things when it comes to coding later uh, to build up sequences of things. So that probably more than you needed to know, but that's actually one of the tricks here that does not know. And there's a, that's one of the tricks a lot of people don't know is that it, printf executes once for every argument uh, after the first argument. So. Um, all right, so back to where we were covering. Um, let's go to wait. Where were we? We were doing we were doing our echoes, right? So cat foo, and we were doing our our our, our regular expressions. Your very first regular expression. So you can use up arrows for now, or you can use J or K L the J to go down, K to go up if you want. We're gonna talk about VI mode later. Um, so as I said before the break, 
this caret means the beginning of a string. In this case, the beginning of a line, right? A string uh, is a term from programming that means, um, what is a string? A string is a term from programming. You can think of a necklace. And the necklace is got beads on it, right? And those beads are letters and numbers and spaces and stuff. And at the beginning of it, it has a knot. And at the end of it, it has a knot. And that, if you, you know, you can think of a string as being a string of individual, uh, in this case, characters. And it's more complicated than that. But that, that's what a string. So when you hear the term string, that's what we're talking about. So think bracelet, think necklace, and you'll be fine. And yes, it is true that you can leave off stuff on the end of the string, like a carriage return, and it will it will appear differently, right? Or you can put stuff in the middle, because like putting inserting beads in the middle or whatever. Um, so so that's a string. So so the caret means, and this is the caret character. We're going to be using the terminology uh, as used commonly, not necessarily hackers, but I think this is most commonly referred to as a caret. I think it's actually the exponent operator in most systems but but in this case it stands for the beginning of a string and the string in this case is a line and the dollar in this case indicates the end of a line at, at, or the end of a string depending on how you what system you're using and what what command you're using right but generally but you can that's a dollar sign end of string okay uh in this case it's the end of line uh, in, in the case of grip, right? They're not always the same, so that's important. It just means the end of the thing, whatever it is. Uh, and in the case of grip, it will actually chop off that uh, that line return from the line before it evaluates that. So that's how you get it. That's what's actually happening under the hood. Um, so so then we get only the A's when we do this as a reminder, right? If we take off this, it drops it off, and we get the AX in there. If we put the the this, we get only the ones that have A at the end. And as we saw, if you take both off, you get them all. You get anything with an A in it. All right. That what I just did is at the core of filtering and mat pattern matching in all of Unix, Unix and Linux. That is the simplest example I can give you. And I want you to pause the video right now and and Practice that and get your head around that simplest of scenarios because if that is at all complicated to you still, um, it's going to be, it's going to get really deep really fast. Uh, in fact, um, pattern matching, I'm going to use that term instead of regular expressions, is as I said, the most powerful thing that the Unix command line provides to people. It's also probably the most misused and misunderstood thing to be out there and can, when misused, can actually be exceptionally dangerous because people will use this to, you know, incorrectly uh, test for proper passwords and things like that. And it happens all the time. And, and if you think this is limited to the command line on Linux, think again, this pattern matching is in every single programming language and 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 frankly the unix pattern matching that began in you know late 70s early 80s has influenced the pattern matching of every language on the planet uh, and we're going to talk about how that has happened particularly when we sample some coding languages later uh in the in the boost but i just don't want you to write off pattern matching, right? Because number one, it's the most powerful, one of the most powerful things you can do from the command line. And number two, if you're ever going to write any code of any kind, you're going to be doing it again, right? And, you know, you might choose to do a substring match, which is different than pattern matching, but knowing how to do the pattern parts, which is a little bit heavier on CPU and stuff like that, is still valuable. All right, I think I made my case there. Um... And so let's let's go. So um, we've got we've got this pattern matching going on. Now, what if we wanted to to uh, match anything with the letter X in it? Let's do that. Let's try that one. X, right? So now we've got X, X, X. We've got all those X's, okay? But now I only want the X to be at the end. You already know this one, right? There's only the stuff that has the X at the end, okay? But let's say that we add another thing to our thing. I'm going up in my history. 
way up in my history, if I can find it, there it is. Let's have something else that has X in it. All right, so let's say that we want a, a, an, uh, an X E X for some reason. I don't even know what that is, but let's, let's like add that. All right, so, so now what do we got? So now we have an X E X, right? So my match for, for X is gonna have X E X. I'm like, no, I only want the one with E in it, right? So there are so many ways to do this. One of the ways is to sort of wastefully use grep again. But it's, so this is the first way I want to show you. So you can do grep again. You can say, okay, give me only the stuff that's got an E in it. Right? So that's a, that's a super wasteful way to do that. But if, you're, if you don't really care and you're writing quickly, you can do that. Right? So you can say grep X, you know, and I've got foo and then I've got grep E. I can go get the E. And uh, so, so this takes the, the output of one. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because this is called a pipeline. This is when we're transforming it as we go. You can actually do the reverse of this. You can say, I want to show anything that doesn't have an E in it, grep-v, right? So grep-v, and you're gonna, it's going to take you a while to master all the many options to grep, but those, those are the ones. Now, you can do everything I just did without doing two grep commands using pattern matching. So you could say grep, uh, you know, instead of saying this, you could say, I want an E in there, right? So I only want the EX, right? Well, what if I want the E and I want the A? That's not gonna work, right? I want the E and the A. Well, then we have a thing called this. We wanna, it's called a, a, a uh, uh, I think it's I think it's called a field, and so now I have all the ones that have an E or an A. All right, and then what if I want to say what if I want to say I don't care what the character is; it just has to be any character at all. Then I can use dot, right? And I want you to see though that yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm using grep. I want to make sure I'm using the right grep. Okay. So, so you've learned a lot here. So, and unfortunately, if we go through every single thing you can do with a regular expression, I think it's probably gonna be way more than two hours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce you to the basics of regular expressions. And then I'm gonna suggest that you do man bash and you read about uh, pattern matching, pattern, pattern and match rules. And in fact, you can go read about regular expressions. I, I just, we just don't have time to cover them all. I really think we could, um, but you need to do a little bit of research. How do I, uh, what are regular expressions? The only thing else I want to close on in here is I want to get you started and I want to show you about regular regex golf where you can go practice. But before that, I want to talk to you about something that's unfortunate. There's more than one type of regular expression. Yeah. Just when you thought you got a handle on regular expressions, somebody comes along and says, I'm sorry, you don't get to use all of those regular expressions. In fact, the reason Perl was created, this is no joke. The reason Perl was created was because the Unix world could not get it together and agree on the format for regular expressions across the board. And Larry Wall got so annoyed with that, he made a language. And his language, Perl, is, which some have said is the practical language uh, extraction and reporting language, is the regular expression notation that was adopted by Perl became so good and used in such, you know, so many different places that to this day, every language on the planet uses Perl regular expressions. In fact, if you look at Python, which is kind of funny because you know Larry Wall called Python snake oil, um, and and JavaScript and Go, they all use a library called PCRE. And and I know you're a beginner, you don't care, but this is a useful bit of trivia. So PCRE, in fact, there's even a PCRE grep, right? PCRE stands for Perl Compatible Regular Expressions. Okay. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this is because I'm about to tell you the different types of regular expressions and how to avoid 
that fiasco. But the takeaway is anytime you are using regular expressions for pattern matching, which is just one way to do pattern matching, by the way, but it's the most important. You only need to care about PCRE regular expressions. Should you learn all of Perl? Not necessarily. Should you learn Perl compatible regular expressions? Hell yes. It's going to give you that power in JavaScript, in Go, in ba every single language on the planet uses it. Okay? So if you don't want to bother learning the nuances of every single ancient version of regular expression that are out there, the most important regular expression uh, language syntax to learn is PCRE. Okay. And, and how do you learn that? I'm going to jump ahead, uh, because we're kind of running on time and I'm going to show you where you can go play PCRE golf. Okay. So do a search for regular expression, uh, golf and, and it should come up and this has been around forever. There's actually a number of places. Actually, there's a, let's go, let's go read it. Regex golf. So this is XKCD. If you don't know about XKCD, this is where all of the, you know, ancient and current memes and jokes, uh, from the tech world are captured. Uh, and here's a great, here's a great joke. Reg, Regex golf. You try to match one group, but not another slash am slash TNB matches star Wars subtitles, but not star Trek. Cool. <laughs> Mega regex golf. So I wrote a program that plays regex golf with arbitrary lists. Uh oh. Uh, but I lost my code, so I'm gripping for files. Hey, there's grip uh, that look like regex golf solvers. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. Matches the last names and elected U.S. presidents, but not their opponents. Did you see this down here? The title matches the last name of elected U.S. presidents, but not their opponents. Oh my god, look at that. There's a regular expression for you. And beyond, really, this is all meta regex golf. Now you have infinite problems. No, I already had that. So this is this is a joke that beginners are not going to get, unfortunately. But uh, the regex regex pattern matching was developed uh, initially to do uh, to to create uh, compiler code, um, parsing and lexing and yak and all that stuff uh, by Chomsky. Neil, if you really care, Noah Chomsky, but uh, it's also extremely flawed and you can cause a computer to crash with a, <laughs> with a regular expression that is, is not, you know, well-written. So just, that is kind of a long running joke. That's what that's about. But let's go back to the golf thing here. So we'll go to the golf here. Uh, it's a saying, it's a blessing, but uh, I'm just going to say, before we get into the regex thing, don't be me. I used to do regex for everything. I went, my business card had a regex on it because I couldn't capture my all the titles I had uh, in one you know thing. Uh, I actually wrote a program if you want to install it. If you're an advanced person, I'm just going to show you about it. Uh, I wrote something called it's a regex tester. Uh, uh, regex is it regex p? I think it is. No, I don't remember. I don't remember what I called it. I'll have to go look it up. It might be just regex. Yeah, here it is. So if you are advanced and you know how to install stuff, I'm just going to mention this. So this is actually a, a regex tester that you can use from Tmux and you can actually use it to validate regular expressions dynamically. So that's a sidebar for our advanced viewers. Um, but for the rest of you, most of your beginners are going to want to go to regex golf here. Uh, uh, <laughs> because of Chomsky. Yes. So, so here is uh, regex golf. You go out to regex golf. We're going to use classic. Uh, which is funny because I think I think classic is PCRE. I'm pretty sure this is PCRE. It might not be. Um, and it's got all these people. You can like see how hard it is, right? Uh, you can actually make it so you don't match. So you type F. Okay, what things matched with F? Okay, so all of these things matched with F. Oh, but we didn't match this. Oh, we're oh, I'm sorry. It says match these but not these, right? So we don't want Fardo. So we only want FOs apparently. Why well, do you know that's gonna fail? So uh oh, we're matching FO here. We're not supposed to match FO there. Okay, all of these O's. There's two O's here, so we'll have to F O O, and and that's how we match. In fact, we didn't even need the parentheses, even though it's nice to have them. But that's a match. Okay, so you can go out to Regex Golf and, and learn more about regular expressions. As I said, I told you which versions to learn and why. Um, and POSIX. Let's talk about that for a second. So what is POSIX? Um, what is POSIX? 
And I'm not going to get deep into what POSIX is right now. I'm going to get very, very surface level. What is POSIX? POSIX is a portable operating system interface, a family of standards by IEEE, which you have to pay $500 for any of their standards, even if they're open, which is totally stupid. POSIX defines both the system and user level application programming. Why do we care? POSIX is a system of standards that some of which govern Unix, right? And the reason you care is because when you're learning Linux, which does not always comply with POSIX, um, you might end up learning things that don't work on AIX or Solaris or any other version of Unix that do work on, on GNU Linux, right? And in that case, I, I added GNU Linux on purpose because GNU is the organization led by Stallman that decided to thumb its nose at the POSIX standard and say, screw you, we're going to do what we want and created a lot of things that are better than POSIX and a lot of confusion at the same time. So that's who you blame is GNU. GNU is the one who violated the POSIX standard. Uh, and then POSIX is the one to charge everybody $500 to even see the standard. So you pick your, you know, demon here. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, so why does that matter? Because let's try the grep again. All right. So we're going to do grep a foo. And we want to maybe make, uh, you know, we want to use the, the old one. And I actually, I think it's using the new one by default, which is, which it's not supposed to do. Um, yeah, there's differences between globs and wildcard matching. That's a good link there. Um, but we're doing, see, so in addition, the variant programs, PCRE grips are the same as grep dash eve. So let's read about that, right? So if you read about the grep dash capital E, which is POSIX standard. So capital E and dash R are the same. You can even use Perl regex here if you want to. Uh, the, one of the things about Perl regexes are that they're a hundred percent compatible with extended regular expressions, but they're a sub, they're a superset. So you can do backslash S to represent any white space and things like that. So that's why we have two of them. You are safe using grep though, by using dash E, right? You're not going to have dash P on a POSIX machine. It's not going to exist. Okay. Uh, you will always have dash E on a machine because that is POSIX, the POSIX standard. You might be asking yourself, well, why don't I use dash R? It's easier to type. Uh, and I do use dash R a lot. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, dash R is not POSIX compliance. And so that's all I wanted to tell you about POSIX today. And I don't even see the dash R here. Uh, that's the recursive referencing. Oh my God, grep, grep has a different variable for dash R. What? That, see, as I said, it's not POSIX compliant. Wow, I just actually uncovered another reason not to use dash R. I, I was not expecting this. Dash R has a completely different meaning to this version of grep. Yeah. I Look, I have read more than one place that says you can use dash capital E or dash capital R in, interchangeably. And I have been using dash R to use to, to, to use extended regular expressions because of that. And I just am learning something. I'm learning today that dash E is the only thing that is guaranteed to be, to mean use the extended regular expression syntax. And so I have been using dash R all this time even on Linux, and now I'm just noticing that it's recursive. I feel stupid. So take my mistake to heart here and actually care about POSIX standards, right? You should care. So if you're going to pick up an option like this or anything, anytime you go to, to learn a command of any kind, make sure that when you see this is the POSIX compatible thing, learn the POSIX compatible thing because that thing's not going to get... Some, I mean, the people that made the decision to over to 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 use R instead of instead of dash as an option for dash E, and then that was a huge mistake, you know. And the reason they did it though is they felt like they were okay to do it. I, I just can't believe that. Did you find the bash bash oh bash aliases? Yeah, I don't know about that. So so the moral of the story here is, um, I I actually think. I, I don't know. I think um, 
see there's extended regular expressions and then there's basic regular expressions bres and here we go grep reg x interpret patterns as basic bres below this is the default okay that is the default um uh, as i said there's multiple versions and i i know we're going to lose people on this but this is super annoying because as you learn about regular expressions you're going to want to know the difference between them and i personally the most annoying difference between the two is the use of parentheses. Uh, parentheses, you know, define segments of the regular expression, right? At, or the use of, you know, uh, like a dot, right? Um, and and I have to tell you that that's one of the most uh, annoying parts of it. Uh, so thank you. So um, so so there we go. Uh, we've got. A bunch of stuff here for that that kind of thing I, I'm, I'm trying to decide how to make this easier for you it's just there's just no way you just have to jump in so now you know what a POSIX standard is you know who why to care and so we can actually do a search here we could say in fact I'm gonna go over here and do it what is the difference between we're using the art of X learning method which is search it and write about it what is the difference between basic and extended uh, and you could put Perl uh, regular expressions. And just to be fair, we did an entire workshop on a Saturday. It took four hours to cover regular expressions that I actually one of our students uh, taught. And so here is the GNU organization, the, the declaration of it. GNU is the organization led by, led by Richard Solomon, who who does. I think I don't think he still leads it, but basic uh, BRE and extended regular expressions in GNU. Um, so, so there you go. Here we go. Use the POSIX specified dash E option dash R regex extended to enable uh, on ERE. Well, I just showed you that that's not true in GRIP. So that's a lie. And I hate to say it, but there are so many different versions of Unix and Linux that knowing how to identify the right switch to use is a part of it. Now, it's annoying, but... All you really have to do is put it in your notes once and say, thou shalt use dash capital E for regular expressions and then follow that going forward. And I guarantee you that that's not included in any book anywhere. I have never once read to use, you know, how to do that. And that's one of the reasons that it's so annoying and people just punt and use other stuff. In Gnu said, which we'll learn about later. I mean, this is a lie. Okay. So wait, wait, said. So, so wait, 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 I want to see. We're going to learn about said, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, permit myself to look at something really quick so the dash r in said this is by the way the reason i hate dashed options i think they are uh, a bane on humanity that should die and i made bonsai for that reason um here we go so the reason i got screwed up is because grep and said which are two programs that are frequently used together uh that both have regular expression support uh do not have the same meaning for the dash r as if that wasn't confusing enough, right? All you need to know is use the POSIX compatible dash capital E because that's the same on both grep and said. And I guarantee you there's at least one Unix veteran who raised their hand with me today and say, hey, hmm, I didn't know that. I just learned that. So that way you only have to learn one thing. Learn dash capital E and it'll work on said and grep even though we haven't learned said yet, right? Uh, dash dash POSIX disable all GNU extensions. Um, use the extended regular expressions in a script for portability. Use POSIX dash E. So, you know, because as I just showed you, man, grep. If we look at grep, I, I'm, I'm really, it's really unfortunate that we have to go through this. Uh, uh, in addition, the variant programs E grep, F grep are the same as grep dash E, grep F chef, and grep dash R. That does not do what you think it's do. This is wrong based on the man page because the man page down here says that uh, the dash R stands for recursive and not for extended regular expressions. Maybe I have it wrong. Let's go check it one more time. No messages, outline, prefix, controls, label, and I could just search for dash R, but I want to see everything. Uh, I don't see it. still don't see it. Tell me when you see it. There it is. Recursive. Read all files under each directory. That is not extended regular expressions. So this man page is either wrong or, and that's spent, I, I have found, okay, here we go. Regular expressions, right? 
Grab Pick extends three different types of Pearl Rank Express. This is great. Let's read this. Basic, BRE, Extended, ERE, and Pearl, PCRE. Uh, and GNU Grep, there is no difference in available functionality between basic and extended syntaxes. What? Why the hell would they do that? No wonder it's been working, unlike said. This explains so much to me. This explains so much to me because it, those basic regular expressions should have been failing without putting a backslash in front of the dot. That's what this, 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 the, I, my eyes are really being opened here. This is bullshit. Uh, and GNU grep, there is no difference in the functionality between basic and extended syntax. That means that they are not implementing the proper basic regular expression syntax in grep. That is what it means. Uh, in other implementations, basic regular expressions are less powerful. Uh, yeah, and that's the problem. You have to work around it. That's why you use dashi every time. The following description, and, and everything that I'm telling you applies to said, because I know, because they get burned by it all the time. The following description applies to extended regular expressions. Sentences for basic regular expressions are summarized afterwards. Pro compatible regular expressions give additional functionality and are documented in the PCRE syntax. So that's what I was telling you about. So this is a good place to read. So you see here it says how a period ex matches any single character. Yeah, that is that's how you should expect it to work. That's an extended regular expression. But if you're using basic regular expressions, that does not work. No, you need to tell it that it's a special the the base the main difference between basic regular expressions and extended regular expressions is that basic regular expressions have to have the special characters escaped with a backslash. And it's a pain in the butt because you, you, you're you used to just typing out your regular expression and then you have to go type the stuff in it. And it's, it was such a pain in the butt that, you know, Larry Wall made another language based on it. Um, so and if you're using awk or said and on these, and any of these other things, this little rant that I'm having right now, you'll understand it really fast. For example, if you wanted to enclose character classes in brackets, right, the brackets are special characters. So in basic regular expressions, they have to have a slash in front of them. And in extended regular expressions, there is no slash. There's only a slash if you want it to you to be an actual bracket and not uh, a, the boundary of a bracketed expression, a character class. This is a pain. This is a pain, but you got to learn it. And then you have these sets. So here's a place to come. This is uh, this is the man grep page. So you can go look at that. If you do man said... You should also be able to, to, to read about it. And we're coming up on, we have a half an hour left. So we need to get into doing some editing with Ed. We're not going to learn said until we learn Ed. And 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 we'll get to all that stuff. At this point, though, every, there's a lot of people that are like, I'm just going to use my VS Code to be happy. And that would be fine. But I want you to understand that this stuff does have power. And and let's go back to our notes here so I can get back on track. Because I, I am really ranting right now. I'm ranting because that man page is totally dumb. It's wrong. If you're a beginner reading that man page, you're going to get it wrong. It's going to say, for grep, there's no difference between basic and extended. So people are going to learn grep, as we just did, and they're going to go into said and awk, and they're gonna, it's not going to work. The regular expressions aren't going to work. They're going to be, what the hell? Because grep decided to not follow the basic regular expression standard and force people to push dash E out of convenience. And I'm going to prove that to you right now. Hopefully I'm wrong. I just everything I look I need look Masi is saying so grep is extended let's try it I want to show you right now what I'm talking about okay let's actually do a test right now because this is news to me I did not know that grep was broken in this way uh, and this this explains so much confusion I've had in my career because I will go to use a regular expression as I know well how to do and, and I'll try to make a pipeline and I'll use grep and I'll mix it with set or something and my set regular expressions will stop fit, will stop working and I'm like, oh yeah, those are basic. They have to have backslashes in front but the grep one didn't need it and then I'm like, what the hell? And now I know why. For the first time ever, I can't believe it. It's almost worth clipping. <laughs> <laughs> because because this entire time grep has been thumbing its nose at basic regular expressions let me prove that so so i i this is a huge breakthrough for me i just want you to know that this is a really huge breakthrough uh so grep x let's uh grep uh let's do the stuff that we were just doing so dot uh x right foo so so that what I just did there, that is an extended regular expression. Okay. Let me show you. I'm going to prove it. So, so let's, so what was dot for? We want to say A, we want A and we want E. Right now we have to put that into a class and let's put quotes around it to be good, good, to be good, good, 
coders and we'll put this this is called a character class that means one of these things uh we're not doing echo echo is dashy by default thank god i think most i think what's happened is most of the linux stuff is now dash capital e by default and they snuck that in there on us and why are the quotes necessary to protect you against expansion? So it's just a good habit to get into. You're going to start putting variables in there and stuff like that. And you don't want that stuff to get expanded before. So just get in the habit of putting single quotes around that argument. It's not necessary. I mean, but let me show you. If I don't do it, I had to do it when I put those in there because it's going to do this. And it's like, now that, that one works. But there's other things that won't work because they have special meaning for those, for those brackets. Right? So we're going to do this here. Uh, I, I, did my aliasing grep somehow? No, I'm using the regular grep. It's not grep dash e. So, okay. Now, let just to give you a sense of this, let's do the same thing with said. All right. So, said, uh, we're going to do said slash. We're going to put slash here. And that should give us, wait, well, I see, dash e expression missing command. Now, uh, let's, you don't know this yet, but we're going to use a substitution command. We're going to replace all of those with uh, muahahaha, okay, something like that. All right, you see what it did? So that's how you modify things in place. And um, so anything that was an AX or an EX got modified. See how I modified it? In fact, let's make it more easy to read. Let's actually change it to uh, AEX or something. Okay, so now you see you see how it replaced it, right? Now that's also working, so <laughs> I'm kind of confused, and I'm I, maybe I've just misunderstood basic error expressions this entire time, which is very possible. Uh, so that should that that should have been escaped. Is it is it only parentheses? Is, maybe it's only parentheses. I maybe Linux has actually changed it. Yeah, I don't know. Does anybody know? This is funny because it's like one of the reasons that I have not had a problem with this is I use Pro for everything. So I use PCRE personally. Anytime I'm ever doing this in order to avoid this fiasco, which is it, which is what it is, I always use Pro regular expressions because I know exactly how they work. I've been using it for 25 years. So I don't bother with the whole basic versus extended. But very recently, for the sake of this boost uh, last year, I tried to dive into the differences between them and I clearly don't understand all the differences. Either that or they have changed it up. Put in notepad plus plus in the search option. Uh, you could do rep as dash b, yeah. So so let's actually let's try something here. I, 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 this is this is this is the experimental nature, the X and RWX. Okay, so I'm glad you're seeing this. We're, let's actually try to make it. We're going to explicitly force it to use basic regular expressions, right? And I don't know how to do that. We're going to figure out how to do that. Let's go look. So I usually I usually put dash capital G. Dash capital G forces it to use the basic one. I have a sneaky suspicion that somewhere along the line, they changed grep, grep and, and, and said to default to extended regular expressions, even though it says this is the default here. And I am going to try to prove that right now. So uh, let's do that. I hope I'm wrong, but we'll learn something along the way. So let's do this. So that's grep. Wait, where's my grep? Where's my grep? Grep, where are you? All right. So grep, we got that. Oh, wait. Where's my food? Am I out of my food thing? Please tell me I didn't do a dash I on my said. to edit it? No, okay. Grep. Wait, why is it not working now? What the hell? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I was really dumb. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I see you guys all saw it immediately. I don't know why I was, what I was thinking. Okay. So, all right. So let's force it to be dash capital G. That's uh, okay. I, I must misunderstand basic regular expressions then. Because I thought you had to escape the character classes. I guess not. Uh, just for fun though, I want to do a, uh, I want to do a boundary. I think that this will fail. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So, so I've learned something here today. Uh, I have learned that character class parameters using a bracket 
uh, do not need to be escaped. Um, but let me show you something. If I change this to dash E, that will not match, and now it will. That is the fundamental annoyance between grep, uh, between regular at basic. Ex that is the most likely thing you're going to hit. The most like the other one that you're going to hit is the use of the question mark, right? So, so let me try that. Also, with echo use new line dash n, it needs a dash e lowercase. We already covered that. We don't. I don't do echo with new line. I I use printf for that. We talked about that. Um, so there's another there's another thing to do, right? So let's say we want as many of these as possible, right? So if I put plus, that means I have to have zero, one or more A or E's, right? And if I use regular expressions, that works. And I'm, I'm just gonna use my editor right now because I'm running out of time. So, so that means this is work, this will work too. So, so now we get all of those, right? But watch this. Now we're gonna go to basic. Fail, why does it fail? Why does it fail? Because Special characters and basic regular expressions must be escaped with a backslash. And my biggest failure today was not remembering or not knowing that character class bracket delimiters do not qualify as special characters, even though parentheses do. <laughs> and if that annoys you and it makes you not want to learn it, just learn PCRE which is an extension of, of Perl. Now, if I put the slash in there, it won't do it, right? Because now it's going to look for an actual slash. If I wanted it to look for an actual slash, I have to put two slashes there to escape it, right? So the moral of the story is this. If you don't learn anything else from this ranting, you know, waste of time, always use extended or Perl regular expressions whenever possible. If, if you are forced to use basic regular expressions, yeah, I actually did alias at SP, but be careful when you alias because those aliases won't be used in your scripts, right? I'm, I'm just telling you, be careful about the alias thing because when you alias, somebody that knows how to do an alias, right? And I have, I have grabbed alias to that P dash P on many systems. But when you create an alias rather than typing it every time, you you create a habit and then when you go to make it you put your code into a script you'll forget to do it and you'll be like why doesn't my code working and the default is going to be basic regular expressions and you're like oh yeah and you're not going to remember that because you made it into an alias so i'm not recommending beginners alias these things in their early days for about the first year if i were you i would still force yourself to put dash capital e on anything that uses a regular expression okay dash capital E and or dash P. The reason I'm not a fan of dash P, even though I love PCRE, is it's not POSIX compliant. And the first time you put a grep dash P on an AIX Unix Solaris POSIX shell script that you had to write for some ancient IBM contract, it's not going to work. And you're like, damn, I don't know regular expressions. I don't know them. So the first and most important type of regular expression to learn is extended regular expressions. And as I said, Perl is a superset of the extended regular expression syntax. If I were you at this beginning stage, I would not bother learning basic regular expressions, but it's very, very important that you know they exist so that when your tool that you pick out of the closet someplace doesn't work because you're using extended regular expressions, you will know why. And nine times out of 10, the reason it's not working is because you're not putting a backslash in front of something you don't have to put a backslash in front of when you're using extended regular expressions. This is super annoying. It's been very ranty. It's because every time I talk about this, I get very irate. Same way Larry Wall did when he created Perl. Uh, and I, we haven't even talked about awk yet. There's like at least six different versions of awk and they all implement different versions of regular expressions that you cannot change with command line switches. The basically the environment, the ecosystem for for pattern matching in Unix has been one of the biggest, pardon my French, shitstorms since the beginning of Unix. And it continues to be a challenge for beginners and veterans alike. Obviously, I just totally screwed it up. So 
don't be me, don't be them, know the difference going into this. And if you take nothing else away, just know to whatever tool that you're having that's using pattern matching, make sure that you get it to do extended regular expressions explicitly and where possible in a POSIX way so that it'll work everywhere, okay? I have seen so much production code that assumes it's gonna be running on a Linux machine with this and such tool that don't even exist and that code breaks. That code breaks. Don't be that guy. Don't be that person. And make sure you can do that. Don't use aliases in batch code. Stop telling people in my chat, Mossy, to use aliases or I'm going to ban you. you. You've been telling people that continually, that it's the same. And I am telling you, they are not the same. Do not make, especially if you're a beginner. If you're a beginner, stay away from aliases. Okay, you don't want aliases ever. Aliases mess you up. They cause you to think you're doing one thing when you're actually doing a slightly different thing. And that is like the devil when you're first learning. Don't do it. Not to mention the fact that if you actually manage to successfully enable aliases in your script when it's running, you have now got a script that anybody who has you learned grep without dash capital E is now assuming that when it doesn't have a dash capital E, it's going to actually do the right thing. It's going to do basic regular expression but because you've enabled aliases at the top of your script, you've just now confused every single programmer who opens your script. So stop recommending aliases in scripts. I'm done. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to this. So uh, let's go back to the, to the topic of him here. So we're on, uh, what is in is what is the string? We talked about that. What pauses do I care about? How much, how many minutes we got? 10 more minutes of ranting. Um, we did grep. Okay. So let's, let's actually, let's, uh, we're not going to get to this. We're not going to, I don't think we're going to get to some of these other ones. I wanted to, but we're not because I ranted too much and got too, too, but you know what? That reg X thing is worth it. We need to go through that. Um, where's the reg X thing? What are regular expressions and why do I care? I ended up covering this without wanting to, uh, how do I fill out certain lines of a file? We did that. How do I determine which lines are unique in output? Let's try that one. All right, so let's go. Let's let's actually open up awk. Okay, uh, I'm just going to tell you about awk. So awk and grep kind of go together. Um, and we also talked about sed, but sed is more for transforming a line. Which um, I mean, maybe we could just jump right. Let's let's do awk and then we'll do grep. Okay, so because we're running out of time, and I'm I'm kind of getting frustrated because we're running out of time. I I didn't plan on that, but you know whatever. <laughs> All right, so let's do. Let's do, let's do, let's do the same thing with, okay, so let's say, let's say, I'm going to just edit my file because you're, you, you, okay, so let's say A, 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 uh, A, A, B, no, how about, let's just put A's at the end of everything, shall we? Uh, I'm going to use a little trick here. Uh, actually, no, let's, let's add something to the front and I'll just put comments and we'll add something to the, all the lines. I just gonna so let's just say we have a file that's got something at the beginning of every line. You don't know how to do this yet, but but we will. So uh, CMT actually, you know, let's do let's do an actual. I can do this other command, or we can do the. Uh, you know what? We could do it using Ed. We could do it using Ed. Should we just doing Ed, or just should we just just get it done? So we're gonna replace the beginning of the line. Hey, it's a regular expression with um, uh, a letter and then a space and enter that so we're going to learn how to do that i promise but for right now i just want to show you what we're going to do with awk so so here we get the same grips and everything though right but let's say um actually let's put line numbers in that that's a better because that would tell us i mean there's other ways to look at the line number let's pretend there's actual line numbers here uh so so let me do something really quick here uh we're going to place the the beginning a uh with uh a one dot and that does know that it's a dot. And then we're going to render this as a pandoc text. So we get the numbers using a filter. You're going to learn how to do all that. So, so cat foo, right? So let's say we only want to see uh, that first field. Okay. So, so what's a field? What is a field? Let's, let's, let's go back to that. Um, how do I search in the file from the command line? We're going to talk about that. Uh, and let's do that. Uh, what is a field? Okay. A field is anything that doesn't have white space on it. Okay. That's it. 
that is it. A field is anything that doesn't have white space in it. And that's the term that you're going to hear all, when, you know, when you say parse something into fields, right? It, it doesn't necessarily mean columns, uh, but people can, you, you can kind of use that interchangeably. A field is anything that's separated by white space. Now, white space so far to you is just a space character, right? But as we learned with teletypes, it could be a tab character. It could be a line return. It could be a carry return. It can be anything that doesn't show up on the screen. That all constitutes white space. And that's why we call them fields and not columns because, believe it or not, you could actually have white space that, you know, would make it look like it is two lines, which actually would be grouped together into this idea of white space. Uh, and different applications have different ideas about what is white space. All right. So, so but you're going to hear this all the time. You're going to hear about white space. What's white space? So white space is for most nine times out of 10, it's just a, it's just a space, right? But there are some times when it can be a tab and sometimes it has to be a tab. And sometimes if it has a tab in it, it'll break the whole program like Python. In fact, Python is a white space significant programming language. And we're going to rant all about that when that time comes and laugh hysterically at, at Guido and the gang trying to add something so as simple as multi-line anonymous functions and they couldn't do it. Uh, there's documented evidence of this because they chose to make white space significant. In other words, it's a part of the syntax of the language, how far it's indented. If you mix tabs and spaces in Python code, it won't work. It won't even run because it doesn't know what to do. So now you know what white space is. So how would I take this line and split that that there's lots of ways to do the split but we're going to use my one of my favorite uh ways there's also there's, there's there's at least three commands to do this right um and in fact we probably should put uh let's put awk down here instead uh uh but we'll cover that we're not going to do the while loop uh we're not going to cover the while loop right now uh, so we're gonna we're gonna use awk, and then we're also gonna use uh, the uh, Unicode is NBSP as well. Yes, there's like a lot of them. Uh, uh, so, 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 yeah. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, the other. I should we use call as well? We should probably use call as well. So, so. We should do that as well. All right, let's go back to, let's just stick with awk, okay? In fact, most of the people that know awk, they know one command from awk, and you're gonna learn that command right now. <laughs> because seriously, it's like everybody's first awk command, and they grep it out, and I'm gonna show it to you, okay? And they, they wanna do one thing. They wanna say, I want the thing that's, you know, I, let's actually make this hard, okay? Let's, uh, uh, let's actually put another field in there. Um, let me, let me go do this again. So let's put something at the end of it, shall we? So we're going to replace in this place. As it said, these commands look familiar. That's because they are. Let's put a um, like like a couple spaces here. No, we'll we'll match that. We'll put a couple spaces, and then we'll put um, what should we put? Should we put uh, end end of line of that or something? All right. So now we have all these end of lines, right? Also, I have a, a, a extra extraneous line return on the end there. So, so now we can do this. We can say cat. You can see all those things, right? So let's say we just wanted the the thing in the middle, right? We don't care about the line number. We don't care about the end of line. We just want this thing in the middle, right? We can go back to our other cat or grep. Let's go back to our grep. We can go grep dash capital E. Uh, and and if you want to alias, that's up to you. But and so. Any lines it's got that have multiple a uh, one or more a or er e's in between uh, before an x, okay, and but we only want the middle thing, right? So we're gonna pipe that to awk, and we're gonna put it in quotes. And this is actually a language. Awk is an entirely po very powerful language with begin and end. You can do some pretty amazing stuff with it. Um, I actually really like it. And the only thing I don't like about awk is that it it's kind of all over the board when it comes to regular expressions depending on what version of awk you're using uh there's knock 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 talk there's like there's tons of them 
But usually when the first person sees an awk command, they're going to see this, right? And this is awk language. And we're going to print out the second column. And so we get we can cut out that middle part, right? That is definitely overkill. There's another way to do that um, using, uh, was it call? Which I don't, not call. What is it called? Is it, what is it? Is it fields? I don't ever use it. I just use awk. <laughs> The reason I use awk is because I can add other stuff to it. But that's that's my preferred way to show you how to pull out the middle thing. Uh, what is the other one, though? Um, alternative alternative to awk. Cut. Is it cut? Yeah. I, I couldn't remember it for some reason. The problem with cut is you have to tell it what your fields are. Right? So let's actually read about cut. So man awk first. So awk is pattern scanning and text processing language. Oh, it's called mock on here. <laughs> I did not know mock existed. I did it. The new awk. There are so many. Okay, awk is the single biggest reason that Pearl was made. Larry Wall detests awk. He hates it with a passion because it's all over the board and it just sucks, man. It's so bad and compared to Pearl. So if if I you can you'll actually find Pearl on most systems just as frequently as you'll find awk. I suggest learning Pearl if you're gonna actually get into the language that does the parsing. I really do. I really think you should these days bash you can do all of that and we're gonna learn that when we talk when we code in bash. You can do any parsing you would ever want to do in awk or Pearl pretty much uh, short of like really low level packing of binaries and stuff like that uh, with with just bash, right? So the reason I don't, I don't use Perl anymore, I use mostly bash. But uh, this is interesting. I, so I read the man page, all the different things here. You can read a whole entire book. It's got its own language and everything. I strongly suggest avoid learning the whole language. But unfortunately, that, that one liner that I just did is still kind of the easiest way to remember to grab a single line, a single field or a single column out of a thing because cut, look at cut is really hard to, to remember. So, uh, and some people are going to disagree with me. Most of the people who get screwed up uh, with cut use delim instead of tab for field delimiter. The default for cut is to use a tab character to delimit the fields. So it's expecting really, really, really old boomerage files that use actual tabs to separate the fields like you would get in a structured uh, a data file, which we will cover. We're going to cover all the structured data file types that are out there. JSON, YAML, TOML, you know, delimited, all of that. And so, so cut still has this. And I think probably one of the reasons that I don't like it is that you have to remember uh, what the delimiter is. And... Um, and select only these characters, right? And then you have to actually set the field. But I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it anyway. <laughs> Mock, what the fuck? <laughs> that needs to be a t-shirt. That needs to be a t-shirt. All right, so let's do this. Let's say cut, uh, let's do, I I'm gonna try it. Let's say, so we want the second field, right? So we want field number two uh, of foo. And we didn't get it because I didn't tell it I wanted a tab. So I need to put a delimiter in there and I'm going to put uh, a space. And to do a space, I have to have brackets. And and now it didn't give it, right? Why didn't it give it? So, so it didn't give it because I told that I wanted one space and not two. And you can see the problem here, right? Um... The delimiter must be a single character. You see where I'm going with this? So cut starts to fall on its face uh, when you don't have stuff the way you want to. Cut may, I, I never remember it if it has it, but cut may have select only these characters, field list, output delimiter, only delimiter, do not print lines containing delimiters, use string as output delimiter, uh, zero terminated. I mean, it's just, it's just, Nobody likes it. Nobody likes you, cut. Nobody likes you, cut. They use awk print one or two, right? I'm I'm just now you know why. Right? Now you know that cut exists and now you know not to use it. <laughs> because it's not gonna do what you want. You can only give it one delimiter and you know, so use awk. Awk automatically. I can even have look, it doesn't matter. I can have this one be like this, right? It'll still do the right thing. Actually, no. Let's put it on one that we're going to see, right? 
and 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 Auk does the right thing. And so this is this, you're going to see this this idiom, if you will, uh, this phrase. You're going to see this a lot in coding. In fact, I would suggest it's probably the most frequent thing you're going to see when you see Auk involved with a thing. Um, sometimes, like if you if you're tempted to start to use some of the regular expression matching with Auk, just know that Auk is you know stuck in the same rut as Greppen said with regard to basic versus regular expressions. The default uses the non-extended regular expressions. Let's prove that. So so I'm guessing. Uh, there's going to be an option here. Let's see. It's going to tell us to use extended regular expressions or maybe not. Uh, uh, oh, look, pause ex space forces mock to consider that send to be a space. Um, hmm, let's see what else can we find here. Uh, there we go. Data conversion types. I mean, it's an entire language. So, you know, good luck learning things. Regular expressions. Here we go. Auk uses extended regular expressions as with dash E option and grep. Uh, this one does. <laughs> <laughs> this one does so make sure you know what kind of regular expressions you're getting into but there's further case uh to use this the regular expressions matter characters those are special meaning are blah 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 and uh matches a non-matter character see i've never seen that that's not a pcre character matches any character beginning ending there's your character matches uh this is the inverse character match in other words what used to mean the beginning of a string now means the inverse character set it's an entire syntax that you're going to have to learn and and we're, we're just about out of time but so that is a good summary of regex though so matches r1 followed immediately by r2 here's r1 or r2 right so you can put an or in there uh when you put the or here's a big good one right when you put the or in you have to surround it with brackets right with parentheses and this is where the, the basic versus extended come in because when you need to start see how this says there's an or in here so this says match uh, any a match at one or more numbers zero through nine, right? Followed by an actual dot, an actual dot. You have to escape dot and, ex and extend a regular expressions because otherwise it means any character, right? Uh, and that means exactly zero or one actual dots, uh, or uh, match uh, an an exact dot plus. Uh, zero or more uh, and one exactly one character of zero through nine right so this is an or right here so that means all of this stuff match that stuff or match this stuff right and then and then this stuff is uh yeah yeah and you guys that's why we went into the pcre go do go to regex golf if you want to learn it uh, I actually really love regular expressions. They come in handy, but they take you got to practice using them. But see here, see these pre these brackets right here. Whenever you have this, you have to have these to limit the scope. If you don't limit the scope and you put the pipe in there, it'll be all of this plus all of or all of that, and that would be wrong, right? So in that case, you want to use the grouping parentheses. And if you were using uh, basic regular expressions, you would have to put a slash in front of those. Not to mention, you'd have to put a slash in front of the question mark and not a slash in front of the period. <laughs> it's just very weird. So just use regular, extended regular expressions. And thankfully, it turns out that on Ubuntu Linux, the mock, which is the uh, version of mock, that's the new one on me. I haven't heard of mock before, uh, uh, assumes a dash capital E like grip uh, extended regular expressions. So and this is 100% compatible with Perl regular expressions. So as I said, Perl regular expressions are superset. That's what JavaScript and Go and everything else uses. Okay. It is a capture group. Yes, this is a capture group, but we don't care about the fact that it's being captured. That's why I didn't use the term capture. Uh, so here we go. Matches are providing our grouping. So it is a group, but the reason we're using it is to limit scope like you would in mathematics. Uh, but it does also provide... Um, a group and we haven't talked about replacement yet but when we talk about said next week uh, you'll know that any of the groupings uh, can be referred to by number and used in the replacement uh, and that's really really powerful that's where we really get into the, the power R star means repeat zero or more times R plus means uh, one or more uh, our question mark means exactly zero or one of a thing and this is just a grouping in fact if you were to put uh, an exclamation uh, this here, 
after the R, it would be functionally equivalent to this. The only difference is, is it would capture whatever that thing was and save it to memory for use uh, in replacement or whatever later. Um, uh, what's that? Uh, oh, it's a, it's a capture group. Yeah. So this is this is a capture group. We'll call it a capture group just to keep people happy now that you know about capturing. Um, for example, are matched by an awk identifiers, the awk numeric constants. Yeah. Okay. It, regular expressions are probably one of the most arcane, confusing, powerful, wonderful, mesmerizing things in all of the Unix world. And, you know, I did allocate two hours just for regular expressions, and it about took us that much time. Uh, and I have not covered them nearly completely. How would you go look them up? You go do your own research. But as you're doing the research, uh, and as we wrap up the video today, make sure you learn extended regular expression syntax. And now we know of three pro three different commands revolve that involve uh, dealing with filtering output, text output that use it. grep dash capital E, um, awk, which uses it by default, and eventually we'll use said dash capital E as well. And so, so that is how you can go about it. Um, and as far as awk is concerned, for now, you only care about that. One of the cool things about awk is you can actually use awk to do pre filtering and substitution and only grab out the columns. So you could like rewrite that grep line that we wrote uh, as a single awk command. But I'll tell you right now that in terms of practical usage, that's not commonly what happens. It's very, it's much more common when you're when you're working from the command line to work out the thing that's going to match the lines that you want first. Uh, in fact, if I were to do that in awk, I think it would be. Let me try it. Let me see if I can pull this off. I think it would be a begin match, right? Uh, I, I'm. This is just kind of fun. You don't have to watch this. You can go now if you want. <laughs> I think um, I think we actually have to add it to a line first. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's this. No, I've got it wrong. Do I have to do dash e? No, not an option. Okay, I don't remember. Maybe my begins wrong. I I I have to go look at my aux scripts. I haven't written aux in a long time, but I used to. I used to write it all the time. Uh, I. Perl might do this. Perl A and E is another one. So I'm not gonna look. I don't. I don't. You can do it with awk, but it's actually easier to build up commands with grep and keep your grep knowledge up, and then just awk out the stuff you want. You know, print. Uh, you gotta have those those uh, those 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 things there. Otherwise, it won't do it. Um, actually, I think you can do an and here. I think you can. Let me let me try it. Oops, I forgot my trailing quote. You have to have quotes on that or you will have a bad day. I think you can do, um, I think you can do this. I think you can do, let's do only the ones that have E in them. Um, nope. Has it E and? Nope. I, my, I, I'm, I'm embarrassing myself at this point. I think it might be slash E. Anyway, you can. But there's something that people don't know, though. You can actually put two commands here. So, if you wanted to, you could print uh, the first field twice. Uh, field zero, by the way. Uh, of course, you could do it if you wanted to change the order. You put a comma between them. This is one of the reasons it's so popular. Um, you know, you can put uh, the dollar three there, and that'll change the order. Um, you can actually do dollar zero is the entire line that's matched. Um, and so those are the most common things from print statement. Um, that honestly, this is most of the time when you see awk is to rearrange the columns and to clean out the fields. So they're nice and pretty so that they could use, be used by cut. By the way, uh, if you do that, so let's say I just wanted to use awk to clean up. You never do this, but it, let's say I did. Let's say all I want to do is clean up the output, right? There's, there's, you know, you could also do this with a regular expression with said, um, but you know, you could do this, and then you could pass that to you know our, that stupid cut thing, which I never use. Uh, and then you know, I want the 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 second field, field two. And, and now you actually get your second field because you've only got the single 
uh, delimiter, which is one character space, which cut requires. That's why nobody uses cut. But you could also do that um, another way, right? Instead of having awk here, you could use said, which we don't know. This is what we're going to learn next week. And you could replace uh, any white space. So we would say, I want to replace any space, zero or more spaces, with a single space. Okay? And, and now we get the same result. Only the difference is that we're getting all the lines. Let's go over here. And you see what we did there? We didn't. We replaced one space because it was basic. Actually, that's interesting. Why did that should not have matched? Uh oh. What do we got here? All right. This is fun. Oh, it's because I don't have a G. Hmm. Huh. What am I doing wrong here? All right. There we go. That was it. <laughs> that was that was that is the thing that bothers me i'm so glad you got to see that i am so glad you got to see that the only thing different between this line and this line was a capital e that is the only difference and i have been burned by that so many times including today that you just saw this was interpreted for some reason as a plus but yet it still matched the line which doesn't make any sense right but this one did the right thing now, i don't even know why in fact i gotta figure out why the other one doesn't work i gotta figure it out i think it's because of the spaces have to be escaped that's what i think yep that was it no that's not it that's not it wait 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 oh my god oh my god i learned something today all right all right let's do this people Let's do this. This is go. I'm so glad this is documented because I have been I fighting with said my entire life over shit like this. So it's why I use Pearl. So watch this. Those two are exactly the same. There. Clip that. Clip that or whatever or write that in your notes. That is why the moral of the story is use dash capital E because this does what you expected. That's Pearl compatible and everything. I don't know what the hell this is doing, but that's what's required if you're using basic expressions, right? Basic regular expressions. And that's why I never get it right. No wonder my matches never work. But not even worse than that, it did match something which is totally confusing. <laughs> because actually, no, it didn't. It, it this is the thing that matched it. This didn't match at all. Okay, I've seen that now. This matched. This matched. And that's what filtered out those initial lines. And then it didn't, this said didn't do anything because this match failed completely. And this match actually worked and therefore it squished all of the spaces and all of these special characters, including the space itself had to be escaped, which is just crazy. Why would I have to escape the space? I don't, it's so weird. Uh, it's born to match, will match garbage. Absolutely. Crep man page, it did you wrong. It did. I mean, come on. They all did me wrong. Okay, so you saw the pain and suffering involved. What is the moral of the story again? PCRE is the way to go. If if you can manage PCRE, go for it. But the next best thing to PCRE is dash capital E, not dash R, because dash R means recursive on grep. It doesn't mean extended, right? Dash capital E. And you can use that for said. You can use awk apparently does it by default. So if you try it with awk, it'll be like, I'm sorry, I don't know what dash capital E is. This really kind of could have done that, right? Wouldn't that have been nice? If we could have had the option to go between the two, but no, 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 no. So grep and said dash capital E. Uh, if you're using Pearl, you got Pearl, so you're already good to go. And um, and then just learn what to learn. Learn extended regular expressions that don't. You don't have to escape anything. Look, if you want me to break my regular expression now, if I put a slash in front of it, what's it going to do? It's going to try to match an actual plus, which is also going to fail. And that produces exactly the same output as this, because this with basic regular expressions tried to match an actual plus because it wasn't escaped the reverse, the exact reverse. And if, and if that doesn't make you tear your remaining hair out, maybe that's why I have no hair. All right. This has been fun day. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. We're going to go now. <laughs> Learn them. They're really fun. Learn regular expressions. And maybe my frustration will, um, will, will, will serve as a cautionary tale to the rest of you. Uh, just learn extended regular expressions. I must have said that 10 times, uh, which are indeed a subset of personal, of pro regular expressions. 
And next week, uh, we'll go through more uh, filter transformations. And I promise we'll get to Ed and we'll get to said, we'll get to uh, VI next week because because we have covered regular expressions as much as we are going to this week. And as I said, you can cover it for five, six hours. If you want some homework, if you want some homework, go suffer through all of these regular expression matches, right? Make a regular expression that matches, you know, the, the name of your kids and all your fish and, and your, your favorite, you know, uh, race teams and, and, and stuff. Yeah, go or, or practice parsing any number of files that are already there, or or go find the regular expression golf game, or go you know you know over the wire bandit where you have to like grep out things out of the file. Uh, you're going to be doing grep every day, all the time. So it's super important that you learn how to use grep and that you know how to use extended regular expressions and why not to use the basic ones. That's all for me. I'm going to take I'm going to take off now. Bye.